Andrew Goldman, one of the founders of Pandemic Studios. After Mercenaries 1, we really we looked at what people were saying about the game. We got you know, some very uniform response, and we set out to really address the, the issues that people had, the issues that we had creatively, and then to explore the creative uh, opportunities that, that we saw you know, in, in front of us there. Going forward to Mercenaries 2, we're really able to push the physics and the destruction to new levels. 130 vehicles, entire environment is destructible, and there's you know, way more explosives in the world. But one of the big things that we're really pushing is the meta structure of the game and really trying to do better storytelling, better character development, uh, and really give the player a sense of progression through the, the whole game. You know, in the last game, it was just about money. The money got kind of hollow. We were really pushing that in this new one where it's about being the best mercenary out there, the pride of doing the job that no army could do. As we were making Mercenaries 1, we were always feeling like we were busting at the seams of the, the last generation uh, platforms. The new generation, it really gives us a fidelity, uh, and in that fidelity, all of the destruction, all of the action is much, uh, much richer. Aside from just moving forward in the, the, the next generation of visuals and physics and all that type of stuff, We've had the time with the franchise to understand the characters, to understand the fantasy, and really deliver a richer experience. We're really pushing the multiplayer experience. We're focused on uh, co-op gameplay uh, and allowing you to play the single player game and then have someone jump in with you at any point. Well, Mercenaries, it's a wide open environment. We've modeled all of Venezuela. Uh, in the Disneyland version, I should say, of Venezuela. And uh, it, there's just a level of freedom in this game to do things the way that you want to do it. You can go and plot your own strategy. We have this, this notion of find your own way to fun. If you like helicopters, go at it with helicopters. If you want to come in in a boat, come in in a boat. It's letting the player pick what they want to do and then develop their own tactics to go along with it. We put a huge amount of effort into making things destroy in spectacular ways and doing it really in a systemic way so that when you, you know, no matter what you do, it will behave uh, appropriately. So vehicles, they break apart in pieces now and you hit them with a rocket uh, launcher and they just explode spectacularly. Glass shatters, uh, buildings now, they destroy uh, in pieces, and uh, you know the destruction really figures into the gameplay now. So some examples of that may be that you may have bad guys uh, shooting out of windows of a, a building. Well, you can either kind of try and shoot them, or you could call in an airstrike and destroy that whole building or the section of the building. You may have a bunch of bad guys that are sitting under an overhang of a building. Well, shoot off the top of the the overhang on the building and let it fall on the guys below and take the you know, the whole group out. Uh, so it's really bringing the destruction to the next level. You know, it's been a big project. The scope of this game is just massive. You know, it's been a, a, a lot of hard work getting it all up and working. But in the end, we're going to deliver something that has more action and more, you know, more things to do than I think uh, you know, nearly any game out there. So I don't want to you know, go over the top and say everything, but it's massive. Yeah.